All right, there's a video that I saw the other day entitled South Carolina Farmer Sues State's Top Cops and Prosecutors After 2019 Hemp Farm Raid Put Out by Jody Barr. He did a great job on it, and I recommend that you take a look at it. The link will be in the description. This is one of those videos that will stoke the fire of rage in your hearts because that's what gross, blatant injustice does when the heart of the just views such evil happening in the supposed land of the free, home of the brave. And before I hit the highlights of this video and summarize the story of corruption and criminality, it's super important to touch on a couple fundamental guiding principles and the cornerstone of why we do what we do when we produce these videos. Injustice against one man anywhere is injustice against all men everywhere. This is the story about a victim of the state named Trent Pendarvis, but it could easily be your story or mine. The injustice and corruption that invaded this guy's life and property is also circling like a vulture keeping an eye on you and me, and it's just a matter of time before it stops circling and nosedives into our lives. Next, are you pro-slavery or anti-slavery? And I couldn't be more serious about asking this question. The reason I ask is because a slave is defined as a person who is the property of another and is forced to obey. A person whose labor belongs to another without consent is slavery. To say that you have a claim to my property is to say that you have a claim to my labor that I perform to acquire that property. And to say that you have a claim to my labor is to say that I am your slave. And here's a bonus question for you critical thinkers out there. What percentage of labor can you actually take from a person against their will and without their consent and it not be slavery? The next principle is when injustice becomes law and if anything is unjust, it's slavery, then resistance becomes duty. Now back to the farmer. Not the vandal, not the thief, not the human trafficker or the murderer or the rapist. When farmer Trent Pendarvis was going about his regular daily business on September 19th, 2019, he didn't have a clue that a local army of badge tyrants were getting ready to throw him into a rape cage. Did he do anything wrong? Did he harm anybody? Did he threaten or steal from somebody? No, no. And no, what he did do though, is get permission from the state to grow a hemp crop. And he got that permission. First of all, free men, truly free men, don't have to ask permission to do anything on their own property. Not in the world of sanity and civility anyway. If you're not free to grow a crop without permission, you're not free. And speaking of hemp, without going into a long dissertation about the tens of thousands of benefits and uses of this plant, ranging from food to fuel to medicine to rope, clothing, cooking oil, fiber, plastic, paper, and building materials, I mean, the list is endless, guys. If you want to find out just how warped and evil the government mentality actually is, you don't have to look any further than how agents of government have criminally regulated a plant that could single-handedly end world hunger, solve major energy problems, and heal the environment. It's nothing short of pure evil to put any kind of regulation or limitation on the growing of something so beneficial. But back to Trent Pendarvis. He gets a hemp license or permission slip from the South Carolina Department of Agriculture to grow his hemp crop. The problem is that when planting season came, he couldn't grow it in the approved field on his property because of the moisture content. So after filing an amendment with the Department of Agriculture, letting them know of the new coordinates for the new field, he had to move it to another part of his property. And it's disgusting that people think that he needs permission from daddy government to do anything on his property, but this is the slave mentality. SLED, or the State Law Enforcement Division, believed Pendarvis to be in violation of the licensing criteria. 
So their army, and I'm talking about a literal army, shows up at his place. The inspector calls him on his cell phone and tells Trent, who's shopping at a local hardware store, to come and meet them down on his field. And here's what Trent encountered when he showed up. I thought that I was going to pull up right here and they were going to get out and walk in the field and look like they did several times before that. When I turned around, all I could see was cars and trucks coming down that road right there. Cars and trucks coming from the other way. I'm not too sure that there wasn't some people already back in here somewhere. I got really overwhelmed with them but as much people coming and I, I don't really know where everybody come from. So this hardworking, not criminal, but farmer who's trying to support his family and his community and the world with a valuable crop gets visited by a group of men with guns who think they have legitimate authority to enter his property, tell him he misinterpreted the requirements and limitations of his hemp license, arrest him, put him in slave cuffs, separate him from his family, arbitrarily take away his freedom, and throw him into a rape cage. And if you have high blood pressure, you may not want to watch this next part. How you doing? All right. Um, so did, did you get a copy of the order from partner bag saying that they weren't going to approve your field here mm -hmm. location okay and because of that um this this field's not lawfully able to grow because mm -hmm. okay, it's outside your um your permit you got that trent buddy you don't have the permission from big daddy government and because you're operating outside our permission we're going to have to take some forceful actions against you. Guys, I don't have high blood pressure, but at this point, I can feel the blood rush to my face and my heart rate accelerates. And if you think long enough about this, the average man would probably be so angry he could chew through steel. Treating this peaceful farmer like he's a common criminal while theft, murder, rape, and human trafficking is going on all over the place is outrageous. This is what these criminals with badges choose to pour their time and resources into, terrorizing a farmer on his own land. We've got to do something with this. So are you good with us cutting it down or? No, I'd rather you talk to my lawyer first. Okay. Who's your lawyer? I'll get a hold of Mr. Charles Williams. Okay. Pendarvis didn't know it, but he was seconds from losing his entire hemp allotment. This sled body camera recorded the September 2019 arrest. Let's go ahead. Then. All right. Well, right now we're going to place you under arrest for growing hemp without a license. Hopefully. For what? Because this is not. This is an unlawful. Well, we'll serve the warrant here in just a minute. Tell you about what it's what, what's all involved. Growing unlicensed, uh, cultivating unlicensed hemp. Can't grow it and then try to amend it. The no. white-haired agent who gave the command to arrest Pendarvis is Sled Major Frank O'Neill. He heads Sled's narcotics unit. By the way, Sled Major Frank O'Neill, Sled Chief Mark Keel, and South Carolina's Attorney General Alan Wilson have all, quote, vehemently and publicly opposed any attempt to legalize cannabis in South Carolina. They refer to it as, quote, the most dangerous drug. To which I would ask, have they ever heard of alcohol or oxycodone? Not that I think any drug should be declared illegal by the psychos of government, but if they think non-psychoactive hemp is dangerous, uh, to be consistent, you'd think they'd be raiding liquor stores, CVSs, and Walgreens in their area. In America alone, 70,000 people die from opioids every single year. And the majority of those take them as directed by a doctor and still end up dead. But these criminals with badges would rather terrorize an innocent farmer growing a harmless plant. Now back to Frank. That was, I didn't understand the way the thing read. You're on the advisory board, right? Mm -hmm. I would think you know, sir. But anyway, we'll, 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 we'll uh, serve the warrant here and explain everything else to you. Major Frank O'Neill and the other sled agent, John Neal, searched him. Can I call my, my lawyer before y'all? Yes, sir. 
Absolutely. Let them finish let you, um, let your hands? getting your knives and stuff, and yes, then they're going to take those cuffs okay. loose okay. for a second, and we'll let you make that telephone call. So Major Frank has Trent searched and handcuffed while he and another officer turn body cameras off so they can have a private conversation. I can't call my lawyer before y'all mess with him? No, sir. You can call your lawyer down in jail. We're we going to cut it regardless. Your lawyer, your lawyer can't stop us from cutting it. It's grown in an unlawful location. I don't it, understand the, what, what's the problem here. All right. Just to, to try to briefly explain it to you. This field is an unlicensed location. Mm -hmm. The Department of Agriculture sent you a letter that said this is a willful violation of your uh, permit. Would it be in a willful violation? They turn it over to, to SLED to pursue criminally. Part of that uh, contract is, is if there's any um, hemp growing on unlicensed location, that you signed, it says it can be forfeited and destroyed. You agree to that. So we're here to enforce that agreement. And that right there is where you have the malignant cancer of order followers who blindly do what they're told regardless of what is right, regardless of who it hurts, regardless of the lives that are ruined, regardless of the benefits this crop could impart on the human race. They don't care about doing what's right. They only care about following orders, even though they wouldn't want this same evil action to befall them or the people they love. So Trent Pendarvis gets booked into jail for unlawful cultivation of hemp. But the way the contract was wrote and the way that I did the amendments, I got an email from the amendments. It don't say anything about the date. It says fill the amendment out and send it back. That's what I did. And to add insult to injury, not only did SLED know that the law and enforcement was not clear, the attorney general told Frank O'Neill to be sure not to violate Trent's rights. And get this, SLED attorney Adam Witsit asked the circuit court judge Diane Goodstein to meet with them and sign a seizure and destruction order without telling her what the attorney general had recommended. To their chagrin, the judge said no. But that didn't stop SLED because eight days later, they went to the county magistrate's office without telling him what the attorney general or the judge said and got him to sign an arrest warrant for Trent Pendarvis. But it was only an arrest warrant. SLED went further and took it upon themselves to not only throw Trent into a cage, but to destroy his $2 million crop. And if things weren't bad enough, an informant within the agency told Trent Pendarvis that SLED agents were gunning for his other legal hemp field in Marion County. If Pendarvis's lawyers didn't file an injunction, and if the judge hadn't issued a restraining order against SLED, they would have destroyed that crop too. So what you got here is what many would call a clear conspiracy against rights and a deprivation of rights under color of law. So I guess you could ask, without government, who will terrorize the peaceful farmers? When injustice like this happens to one man anywhere, it's just a matter of time when that same injustice will pounce on all men everywhere. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know, and don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.